For those of you who don't know me, and there aren't many in this room who don't know me by now, <laughs> I'm Steve Rosenberg. I'm the president and founder of Coaches. And on behalf of our board, our advisory committee, and the staff, I want to join myself and everyone else and welcome you to this room. As Liz said, three and a half years ago, on November 17th of 2010, we gathered many of you in this room with a vision. And the vision was that healthcare reform, which had just been enacted five months ago, held within it the ability to change the curve on how we thought about the relationship between justice and healthcare. At that time, Lori Robinson, the then Assistant Attorney General, who is now a professor at George Mason University, gave the keynote address. And in her capacity as the Director of the Office of Justice Programs, Lori talked about, from her perception and the Bureau of Justice Assistance, the relationship between healthcare and criminal justice. We thought that was an amazing feat at the time to get someone who was an Assistant Attorney General up here on this stage before you and articulate the relationship between health and criminal justice. In 2012, we held another conference in this room on the relationship between healthcare disparities and criminal justice disparities and how closely tied they were. And Gary Puckrain from the National, Health Quality, the National Minority Quality Forum, our partner at the time, regaled us with simply frightening statistics. The relationship between having a hip replacement if you were non-white versus you were white regardless of insurance status. This whole concept of health reform, criminal justice, disparities, minority rights, and civil rights being inexorably tied. And at that time, Tanya Robinson, the woman in the Domestic Policy Council at the White House, who serves as a special assistant to the director of the Domestic Policy Council, gave the keynote address and again spoke from the perspective of the administration in the White House on this incredible link between health reform and criminal justice. But the Supreme Court had just ruled. We didn't really know that Obamacare, a health reform, was going to be a reality. And today, April 3rd, we are three months and three days into the enactment of the Affordable Care Act. And what started off as a vision in this room, which many of you shared, and which Scott, Langelo Scott Moyer, Langeloff Foundation, Seema Gajwani, Public Welfare, and Nancy Barron all have sponsored philanthropically over these years in order to create this connectivity. We're now here, folks. I just want to be really clear. We're here, okay? And in being here, the focus is going to shift. The focus is going to shift, and I'll be talking about this at the end of the conference. The focus is going to shift from envisioning to doing, from thinking about to creating, from wondering to implementing. Okay? That is a much longer and more challenging process. Frankly, the easy work has already been done. Okay? We've planted the seed. I think there's everybody in this room, is there anybody in this room left who doesn't believe that healthcare and criminal justice are inexorably tied? Can I have a, a single hand that shows up? We've done a great job. <laughs> I don't think that would be true when coaches started in 2005. But that belief will not create the types of change that SEMA was describing. That belief will not take SEMA's successors in the basement of the Superior Court appearing before a judge as a public defender and saying, this is a criminogenic act that, Your Honor, you are committing because the healthcare system has left you with no other choice. Okay? That belief will not be sufficient. In order for us to make a change, we're going to have to translate that into implementable actions. I sound like a healthcare planner that I was at one point in my youth. Okay. And, and I want us to remember that that's what today is about. The other unique thing about today is Jane and Health Affairs' presence as a partnership. Um, I, I like joking about how uh, those of you who have not been to our office may know that Coaches works out of a bungalow in the hood uh, in North Oakland, uh, and we don't have a fancy high-rise office building uh, that we work out of. And that uh, for us to be partnering with Health Affairs, which is like the prestigious, whoa, uh, journal in this field, is quite a statement in and of itself. Okay? It's a statement about recognition. It's a statement about partnership. And it's a little bit of a statement that, Jane, I heard you say when you went back after your 30 years and you searched your old journals and you looked at what have you guys said about jails, and the answer was not very much. Okay? 
because these 11 million folks, we're very content to keep them invisible, okay? We're very content to leave them the burden of the criminal justice system to pick up the shortfall that the health and social services system has not provided. This is inexorably and unbelievably expensive, okay? If you ask any county person how much money they are spending on the public safety system, we, frankly, that they don't need to spend, the answer is absurd, okay? Uh, we were joking last night at dinner about part of what made coaches success, and we were talking about my entrepreneurial tendencies to look at assembly lines and, and take them apart. And if you look at the criminal justice system from start to finish as an assembly line, it's no way to run a railroad, okay? It's an incredibly poor use of taxpayer dollars, we don't increase public safety. We don't increase public health. What we do is we increase taxes, okay? Uh, I, I don't think that's a way that we want to proceed going forward. And so this partnership with health affairs becomes unique because what it allows us to do is it allows us to mainstream. It allows us to mainstream not only the folks that SEMA was seeing in the basement of the Superior Court building. It allows us to mainstream an idea. And that idea is a bipartisan idea, because that idea involves lowering taxes. As far as I know, that's a bi that has some friends on one side of it. That idea involves increasing services to the poor. That has some friends on the other side of it. You know, uh, Health Affairs has a bipartisan board of, of good Republicans and good Democrats. And in the course of trying to go ahead and advance this concept of partnering with coaches, Jane, you didn't get any resistance from your board whatsoever because everyone recognizes this as a bipartisan concept in which we all as society members will profit and win by figuring out how to change this curve. It's not gonna be easy. That's what we're gonna spend our day talking about is how to do that. And is the Associate Attorney General here yet? Does anyone know in the back? No? Great. So <laughs> at that point, Nancy, can I bring you back on stage, talk a little bit? Yeah, come on. And talk a little bit about uh, RWJ's sort of shift in how you guys are thinking about coaches going forward. Yes, no? You want me to talk about it? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. So, so Nancy had a, Nan, Nan Tori in her brilliant way. Thank you. Let me take, I have to take a minute here. Nan Tori, can you please raise your hand so everyone <laughs> knows you? This all happens because of Nan, folks. If, you, if those of you don't know that, <laughs> this all happens because of Nan. I, we, are, we have been incredibly blessed in the nine years we've been here of incredible young people who I want to thank. Ben Watts, are you here in the room? Dan Mistak, are you here in the room? Matt Bekelly, are you here in the room? David Horowitz, and of course, Julia Kaiser, who came back having worked for us before. These young people is what makes coaches work day in and day out, but it's Nan who really <laughs> makes the work, and thanks again. And Nan suggested, quite frankly, why don't I ask Mike to start by just giving us a brief background on who's in jail while we wait for the Associate Attorney General. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Mike.